Our readings this morning make God look like he suffers from a personality disorder. In the first reading from the book of Exodus, God is more than mad at the Hebrews, who he just led out of Egypt and wants to kill them all for worshiping a false god that looks like a cow. But in our gospel, we hear the beautiful parable of the prodigal son, or as I like to call it, the story of the running father. Because as soon as the father sees the son returning, the father runs to the son first. This parable, of course, is showing how merciful and forgiving our father in heaven is toward us, his beloved sons and daughters. These seem like two very different gods who react in different ways toward their children who become disobedient. However, there's only one God, and he is perfect, so he can't have any disorders. When we look at our second reading, it all starts to make sense, which is why St. Paul converted so many to Christianity. He knew what he was talking about. St. Paul wrote in our second reading, Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. How does this answer our question? Allow me again to share the famous parable of the philosopher Soren Kierkegaard. There once was a man who on Christmas Eve night was staring out his window and saw some geese roaming in the snow, looking for water. The man knew if the geese moved just about 20 yards east, they would find the frozen pond and get their water. He started thinking what he could do in the spirit of Christmas to help these poor, thirsty geese. But he knew that if he went out there himself, he would scare them away. So the man thought to himself, if only I could become one of them, I could lead them to the water without scaring them away. It was then that it dawned on him, that's the meaning of the incarnation of why God became man in Christ Jesus, to lead us away from sin to the wellspring of salvation. God wasn't more mean in the Old Testament compared to the New. Rather, it wasn't yet time for Jesus to become man. And anything else that he would have done would have scared off the Hebrews. So God called Moses to intercede for and speak to the people and speak for the people to God and for God to the people. God chose many other prophets to do the same. Then it was finally time for Jesus, who is God, to become man and save us. This is the running father who saw us deep in our sin and misery. And so he came to us, became man. He walked our walk, talked our talk, died our death, and rose from the dead. God comes to us. The same God who sent Moses to free his people from slavery in Egypt, the same God who rescued his people from exile in Babylon, the same God who sent his Son to become like us in all things but sin, so that he could be murdered and save us from our sins. This is our God, who is love. My brothers and sisters, God continues to run after each of us. He's running after you right now, and he will keep running 
until he's holding you in his arms of love. Stop running from him. Stop, turn around, and either run toward him, or if that's too much, just stand still and wait for him to reach you. We are all running from God for various reasons. I'm a terrible person. I sin too much. I'm not worthy of love. I don't matter. These are lies. They're all lies. You and I, we were all created good by the Father. We read that in the book of Genesis. When God saw his creation, mainly human beings, he said that we were very good. We're created good. We are not bad. All of us are good. No sin you commit is greater than God's love. No sin you commit is greater than God's love. And to add on to that, for us to think that something we do is greater than God's love means that we think we're greater than God. Because we think there's an action that us as human beings can commit that would be greater than any act God can do. And that's just, that doesn't make any sense. That would make us better, better than God. None of us are divine. No sin we commit is greater than God's love. Now, because you and I were created good, and in God's own image and likeness, we certainly matter and are loved by our Father, who is love. Stop running from God. Let him catch you and hold you in his arms of love. We do this through prayer and by receiving the sacraments, especially the Eucharist and reconciliation. Stop running. Embrace the Lord and allow him to embrace you.